Welcome back to another episode of Boomer Bush and Home for NFL Draft Talk. I'm your host, Terry, and today doing our first position group of the year, the 2019 Offensive Tackles. Thank the Lord for this cold day. Otherwise, I would not have been able to finish. It's been tough with my schedule. Seems like I won't be able to do as much as I have in the past, but I'm going to definitely try to get all the top people. So uh, go to the, the description box and you can uh, see the link to the actual document if you want to check out the further details. Um, but we're just going to go over to kind of the top three guys and then uh, also look at another person that I like. And then we're going to wrap up with the real grade for the Atlanta Falcons looking at their 2016 NFL draft. So let's get this started. Uh, number one. When we do an offensive lineman I ha- or evaluations, period, I have gradable traits. Gradable traits for the O-line, the guard centers and tackles is run blocking, pass blocking, and it's always out of five. And um, those are kind of simple, but they also have a lot that go into them. So, yeah, that's kind of what I look at. So, first up, number one, we got Jonah Williams from Alabama, 6'5", a little over 300. Now, this is probably what... Most people consider the number one tackle, although I would say this group doesn't have a clear-cut number one guy. But he's in my top three, I would say. So left tackle, former right tackle. Some people might look at him as a swing tackle. I personally think he might just project as a right tackle and probably could give you some left tackle ability in the emergency role. But but the thing I like about Jonah, um, he has that Alabama kind of clean-cut technique. Uh, for a lot of different things and moves well within the space of a play, but he also has a nasty attitude. Um, he's a guy that wants to get after blocks. And personally, I like guys that look to move people and get after a block rather than people that just try to get in the way. Now that's going to differ scheme to scheme what you need, but that's just my personal opinion. So as far as the pass game, the pass set is the one thing that really worries me. Um, we talked a lot about pass set last year. But that pro kick slide is what you really look for. You see most professionals do that. And it's for a good reason. It helps you get vertical and cover space, but it also sets up a strong inside post leg so that you can redirect if someone is going inside on you. Now, of course, that's going to depend on your athletic ability, but that technique is usually what's used. But in college, you see a lot of different stuff. You see guys that play basketball and shuffle. And you see guys that are choppy. The thing with Jonah is that he tries to get so much space to compensate for speed that he gives up too much ground and opens up an inside lane. And you see that a lot with right tackles where the guy's fast, so they try to hurry up and get back there. And the problem with that is if you got a guy that's going to speed the power, that he's rushing up field hard and then it's going to turn inside and direct that energy into you, you're going to get uh, pushed back into the – quarterback most times so you want to make the defender go the longest way around you possible you don't want to immediately give up the inside and you also have to get vertical so that it's not an easy sack as well so with Jonah Williams again I, I think that's something definitely coachable that can be fixed I mean is he coachable that's a different question that I can't answer from the tape But if he is coachable, that's something that you can really fix. But the pass set is going to help out everything else in your game when it comes to the pass pro. So I think that's a big thing that you want to keep an eye out for with him. Now, the run game, absolutely love him. I I think uh, he's very physical. He he can do a lot uh, between power blocking base blocking, and all the type of zone stuff that you want to do. And the uh, down the field stuff, we know um, all the different screens are a big part of the game, and I think he's excellent in space. Number one, he has good angles, and he shows up balanced. Now, some linemen just run downfield, and the linebacker runs right past him. The lineman has no agility to redirect. But if you arrive balanced and control, you can at least get in the way, if not knock the linebacker or safety out. And I think he plays well there. Jonah has great pad level and he has great leg drive. Like I say, he looks to move people and an excellent double team blocker. So I think he's just a real plus in the run game, but he's not so bad in the pass game that he's a liability. I think he could get better in the pass game. 
But even if you just take him right out of college, I think his pass pro is going to be um, pretty average. And that's that's not terrible for a rookie. So uh, if you get a plus run team that can utilize him the way that some of these power tackles are used in the league, you can really boost up your run game. And I think even with the help from tight ends and running backs and whatever, he'll be perfectly fine in the pass game. So then we go to Cody Ford out of Oklahoma, who is a right tackle, former guard, 6'4", 338, really big dude. I like Cody Ford a lot. I think he would um, possibly, be, possibly be fighting for a top three spot for me. Um, he's definitely a right tackle, but he has a lot more agility to him than uh, his size would indicate. So if you think about Orlando Brown now, he's not. Nowhere near as big as Orlando Brown. Uh, Orlando Brown's probably got like four inches on him, but he is a heavy guy. And so, uh, with that type of, uh, weight, you usually don't see guys that can move well. Now, Orlando moved well for his size, but I think Cody moves even better, but he has that natural leverage at 6'4. Um, in the past game, I think he's going to give you a little more than you would expect him to give you. Uh, but again, He's a straight right tackle. He's not going to be able to go against speed. But once he gets his hands on guys, it's kind of good night. And you like right tackles like that, that if they get their hands on you, they can shut down the pass rush and pretty much box you out because they're so wide that it turns into a wall. And so with these guys, they got to win on the snap. You have to beat him on the snap. Otherwise, once he gets his hands on you, it's kind of good night and um, he's had such natural strength and he has such a good punch that he can really, especially if you're a smaller defender, he could really knock you off your track in the pass game. So um, I like his pass set. I like that he's patient. He doesn't really rush real fast to get out there to compensate for speed. But in the NFL, you're definitely going to have to give him some extra help in that uh, sense. Now uh, in the run game, I like him in space. Uh, I think his pad level is pretty good in the run game, uh, but he could, he could, he could get better with his leg drive. I think he has good, uh, angles and he knows where to play his setup and where he needs to be. But I think sometimes since his arms are so long and he's so naturally strong, he doesn't work to really move the lineman as well as he could. So that's something I would look for. And then he's not. I don't think he's a zone guy at all, but I also am not sure he's a puller either. I know some people like to pull to tackle and do different things with them. I just feel like, you know, when he gets there, he, he makes the play, but I don't know how often he's going to get there in the NFL. And again, he's playing around 340. He might slim down a little. I just don't know if I want to pull that guy, uh, from the backside. Now, if we got a tight end, on the line and then maybe it's a tighter pool maybe we could do something with that but i just think all those kind of power schemes and you know the zone schemes i don't think that's cody's bag i think he'll be good for a high volume passing team and a team that uh kind of does straightforward gap runs so that that'd be my bag but i think he's he's pretty solid in both areas so i really like cody for it uh, and then the third guy I would say on everybody's list is Greg Little out of Ole Miss, who is one of the only true left tackles. Now, if you're talking about just looking at him, I test, this guy is number one. He's 6'6", 325, and you know he's probably playing around 320, which is a little bigger than the average, which is good, though, because that helps him out. But when I watch him, I don't see that switch. I don't see that nasty attitude. I don't see him getting after blocks. In fact, I see him quitting on blocks sometimes. And that's a big red flag for me. I I don't deal well with guys that quit on blocks. Uh, So that's one thing that worries me. But if you look in the past game, he's got good quickness. For 6'6", he can really move his feet, that dancing bear type of guy. Um, I think he's, he's really solid. And most of the pass protection stuff. I think his pass set is good. Sort protection when that's, I'll explain that another day, but in sort protection, when you're kind of passing guys off between the line, 
Um, I think he's aware and he, he doesn't really mess up too much in that, but I don't know how much range he has. I think his lateral quickness is good. Him going forward is good, but I don't know if he can switch targets, uh, that quickly. And I don't like his punch. I don't like, I think it's kind of passive. A lot of his blocks are just kind of getting in the way. And even in the past pro, I don't think he looks to stone or knock anybody out. So that's one thing that worries me. Uh, but the hand placement's good. All around solid in his past game. In the run game, I, I think he plays with great leverage. The man is six six and you wouldn't know it. He it it it, it isn't him leaning over or ducking his head. It's him actually squatting down and getting low and getting leverage. So I love that about him. But that's about it. I don't think um, he's good in space. Uh, he, he Again, he doesn't look to move people. He just kind of gets in the way. Uh, he misses a lot with bad angles. He doesn't have good leg drive. I mean, even with his double teams, he can be okay with another person. But his single base blocking, I don't think is that good. But with a guy that has that type of size and leverage, I do think you can coach him up. The question is, how bad does he want it? Because he seems very disinterested. And you see guys like that. When they have this natural size, it's just like, well, you're supposed to be a football player. Why wouldn't you be? You can make so much money. And so a lot of times these guys don't love the game. It's just them being out there because that's what they feel like they're supposed to do. So uh with Greg Little, uh I think his pass blocking is uh very on par with everybody else in the uh draft, but also his run game is gonna be a lot to get worked on. So you're probably looking at a team that is kind of pass heavy, which isn't bad because those left tackles are high demand. So real quick, a guy outside of that group that I really liked was Yandi could could you stay? Could just I'm sorry, <laughs> Yandi could just Yadney could just Jesus from West Virginia, six five three twenty one. I think he's the most athletic guy out of the group, and he has an attitude that's just as good as the rest of them as far as getting after blocks. So uh there's some technique overall that needs to be worked out, and I think if his technique improves all around, he can really be great potentially. But for right now, it's just a lot of his pure athleticism and strength is what really excites me. And not in a project type of way. I think he does have good uh fundamentals, but he just has to clean up his technique a little bit. But as far as being able to get out in the pass set, as far as being able to switch targets and sort protection, as far as getting down the field and making blocks on linebackers, he can give it to you. Uh, you know, either way that you're looking for. And in the run game, I think that he works very well in double teams and he definitely uses his legs to move blocks. I, it's just a full package. But again, there's a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. So I'm not ready to say he's amazing or anything, but I think he's very highly rated for me. So those are the offensive tackle group. Um, again, you can go to the description, click on the link if to look at all the guys that I was able to evaluate in more depth. Now, we're going to jump over to the real grade for the Atlanta Falcons. So, let's rewind the clock. It's 2016, as soon as this loads up. And here we go. Num- we got um, six picks. And uh, we'll just kind of go down the line. So, number one, you got Keon Neal. From uh, Florida, uh, he is definitely still a starter and a pro bowler uh, before, not this year, but pro bowler before. Deion Jones from LSU was a pro bowler. Austin Hooper, tight end from Stanford, was a pro bowler this year. Devontae Campbell still on the team and starting with Deion. Wes uh, Schweitzer, Schweitzer, I can't, Schweitzer, I can't even. <laughs> um, Wes is still on the team, and he start uh, this year, two for the line. And Devin Fuller is no longer in the league. league. So you got six players. Out of the six, five of them not only still on the team, but all five are starters. And not only that, out of the five, three of them have earned Pro Bowls in those three years. 
And then the one guy that you have that's not on the team anymore is not in the league. So it's not like they went anywhere else. And that was your seventh round pick. And so that's big to know. So Keon Neal immediately popped well for them as their first round pick. They definitely hit with that. Deion Jones, again, uh, popped just as well as Neal early on. And then Hooper slowly became what he is now. And Devontae Campbell worked in as a starter too early on in his career. So you, it's no way to look at this but an A+. Plus. You got uh, hits all the way down your first, second, third, fourth, and sixth round pick. But you got sixth round pick starting, fourth round pick starting. Your top three uh, rounds, you got pro bowlers all there. I mean, that that's how you do a draft, especially when you don't even have a lot. So it's one thing to draft like 12 people and then hit on six people, but to hit, draft only six and hit on five of those, like majorly, where they're still starters for you, that's big time. Now, uh, not all of them are stars, but you, you draft people to start. And when you get six rounders starting for you, that's a boom for you. So definitely going to go ahead and give them an A plus for that draft. And yeah, that was pretty simple. So anyway, that wraps up this episode. Um, if you got any thoughts on offensive tackles, any guys I didn't talk about, um, any guys that you particularly like or don't like, any of that, any comments on the Falcons draft, all that good stuff, then go down the comment section, start commenting, get the conversation started. Thumbs up, subscribe, share it around, and thank you for listening.